What's poppin'? Y'all may notice something a little bit different. Yep, I finally got my freaking new mic. Hallelujah. Prior to this, I was using one of those one of those lavalier mics, basically the ones that you see clipped to uh, people's shirts and stuff, and it was great from a convenient standpoint. You know, it followed me everywhere I moved and kept the audio relatively consistent, but the quality was frankly just shit. <laughs> I actually laughed really hard recently when one of y'all said in a comment on one of my previous videos that it quite literally sounded like I was taking a shit on the toilet and taking a work call. <laughs> Absolutely insane, but honestly true listening back. So anyways, I hope y'all like the new audio because I sure like it a lot better. Now, let's get to the main point of this video. For those of y'all that are new to this channel, hi, I'm Cooper and I make videos discussing things happening around ESO, whether that's builds, event guides, Reddit post discussions, news breakdowns, or, or forum post analyses, stuff like that. I release a video like this every single day to keep y'all in the news and the know about what's going on. I've been playing since 2014, not necessarily during the open and closed beta period for the game, but I've been playing since launch. I've hopped around a bit on the various platforms going from PC to Xbox upon console launch for about six months, and then I made the jump to PlayStation at that point. I had a vast majority of my buddies on console at the time, and so I figured making that switch would enable me to play with them. But unbeknownst to me at the time, the console servers weren't linked, so eventually I sold my Xbox and I got a PlayStation where I lived out my dreams until, you know, shortly after Blackwood's launch. Sorry, that was Harley shaken. Um, anyways, I had been playing a Templar from the start on PC before upping and leaving. So not super long at that point, just like a year um, before console launch. Um, before I left to Xbox, like I just said, where I was then maining a Nightblade um, since then. The way I've always approached MMOs in general, especially ESO, is I've been super single character focused. So not like single player, like single player versus multiplayer, but single character. Meaning I'm not really like a big like alt person. Like I don't make a ton of characters and play all these characters. Sure, I may have had them for, you know, doing writs, cheesing achievements that require you to do like, you know, that certain daily 30 times, stuff like that. But I never really played them much outside of that. The reasoning in my mind is that I've spent all this time collecting stuff, like all of the motifs for Grandmaster Crafter and then beyond that, completing achievements, completing zones and skill lines, and I just simply didn't want to do this on another character while my main was there with all of it done. If you know what I mean, you'll be able to relate, but I'm sure I'll get the response of, well, you don't have to do that. You know, the motifs are account-wide. You're, you're able to use them all at the outfit station, right? But for me, like the way it works, like I want to collect all of that stuff on anything that I create. And so that was always a problem for me. So this has led to a variety of feelings over the year. Burnout, a yearning for a class change token, which those of y'all that have been around for a little bit, I've made a couple of videos talking about how I think we need one. And then frankly, just boredom, honestly. Especially with the armory system, I've played everything that you can imagine playstyle-wise on both of these classes, Nightblade and Templar. I've tanked, I've made one bar and two bar variants. If those of you guys that have been around for a while have seen some of my builds, you know I made like the Ragnar build, which is a one bar Templar tank. I've made a, a typical kind of meta Templar tank build. Healers, it's kind of the same thing. Healing's a little bit different because it's, it's a lot harder to make a, like a quote unquote fun build or an off meta build for healing. Most of the time, you know, as a healer, it's all about support. You know, you're increasing the damage of your group, you're buffing your group, you're debuffing enemies, stuff like that. So making like a, you know, like an off meta variant is kind of, kind of difficult. Um, I've made PVP tanks, PVP DPS, same for healers. I've made bow DPS, solo variants, classless variants, like you name it. Switching these roles and builds and rotating through them always served to really freshen up the game for me. All right, so now I want to slightly switch gears. So outside of Infinite Archive, you'll notice that builds that I always have put out have been largely tied to what I play most of the time because I never release builds that I haven't played just a ton by myself, okay? So as such, a vast majority of my builds have always been Templar related, minus my recent Arcanist build because I've just had so much fun with it. I don't like to release videos of my builds that I haven't played much because I simply can't have the same types of discussions with y'all otherwise. And so I just want to be, you know, truly genuine 
when I say that I've been having fun playing it and that it's effective in a variety of content and all those types of statements. So now for recent times. So I've made a couple videos recently discussing my thoughts on Gold Road and also my thoughts on burnout in general and what to do with it. I promise this is all going to wrap up and be linked. Um, but one of the things that really reinvigorates my love for this game is the new content that comes out. And to say that I was excited for Gold Road is an understatement. It's incredible, by the way. I'm not saying it's bad. Not at all. And it's a new zone. It's got new stories, new quests, new adventures with friends. The coolest trial I've ever played in this game by far. A brand new offshoot system of spellcrafting, basically. I mean, this was lining up to be just absolutely goaded for me. Then it launched, and I've played through everything you can think of. I've 100%ed the entire zone. All achievements, you know, exploration, quests, on two characters now, my Arcanist and my Templar. I've gone through the entire Scribe and quest line, every single wing, yes, all of it, on two characters and collected every script on two characters. Not, that's not like a ton, but, you know, that's not, it's not like I've spent very little time in Gold Road. And I've had a freaking blast, but now I'm kind of back to doing what I did before, my average day-to-day -day stuff, you know, playing with friends, meeting new people, new players, running dungeons and trials, scanning Reddit, the forums, and ElderScrollsOnline.com for more info to discuss with y'all. And what I came to realize was that while scribing changed how I can play my daily activities, it didn't necessarily add to the gameplay necessarily. So what I mean by that is it, it gave me an awesome new toolkit on my Templar to use, but it didn't add any sort of tangible thing that I can chase after that I'm motivated by and that's truly a good reason to log in and play every day. So yes, I've been feeling a little burnt out. To add to that, the Gold Road expansion was incredible, but also incredibly short, in my opinion. We had four or five main story quests, I think. And the zone itself is incredibly small relative to previous chapters. Think about how big zones like Vardenfell, Western Skyrim, and Blackreach, and Somerset are. Think about how long you spent in their stories and compare that to Gold Road. Gold Road, while incredible, felt much closer to an old age quarter four zone story DLC than a big chapter release or expansion. But that's my unasked for opinion. So yeah. I'm indeed feeling a little bit burnt out, and I'm doing all the things I suggested to you guys. I'm playing other games, namely Ghost of Tsushima. I'm playing World of Warcraft Season of Discovery and Elden Ring, and I'm splitting my time as evenly as I can between them. This has been great for my gaming brain, but I'm still absolutely in love with ESO, you know, and I still log in daily. I just needed that kick for me to get excited again, truly. So, you know, looking ahead to quarter three and quarter four, I don't know if the housing update or the PVP update are truly going to be things that get me excited to log in every day because they're just simply not really my cup of tea. And that's okay because I'm beyond excited for the housing community. And to say PVP folks are long overdue for some content is just an understatement, plain and simple. Regardless though, I needed to do something to change my viewpoint on my day-to-day -day gameplay. So I did what any sane person would do, and I deleted my Templar. Yep, you heard that right. My main that I've collected everything on that I was just talking about, recipes, all the research, mount training, motifs, everything, he's in the trash can now. I'm obviously kidding on the sane part. I'm clearly a nutcase, but why? Why do this? So one of the greatest times I've had in ESO was when I made the jump from PlayStation back to PC. I had all of this knowledge from my time on console and a fantastic motivation to get all of the achievements, start fresh with a different class other than Nightblade, and just tear it up. It was incredibly fun picking up where I had left off back in 20, what, 2015 when console launch first dropped, and I wanted that feeling again, and I didn't want the ability to fall back on my main when I opened the world map and I was kind of overwhelmed and I had to do all of that zone completion all over again. Now, it's not completely... Starting from ground zero, I had one of every class level to 50, you know, accumulating CP, doing research and mount training, all of that, like I said earlier, for things like those achievements, writs, and the like. So I basically got a fresh level 50 character with crafted gear on it in the world of Tamriel in front of me. You can probably guess which class I picked by watching this B-roll in the background, but let me explain why I chose Sorcerer. Obviously, you heard my entire freaking life story with Nightblade and Templar, so they were out. I also didn't think 
I really needed to talk to y'all too much about Necromancer. Yes, the support roles for Necromancer are fantastic, but with the state it's in right now, that didn't really excite me, you know, to log in every day and do that. So what was I looking for? I wanted a class that was off meta for some roles, but still extremely fun and viable. You know, sometimes for me at the point that I'm at, sometimes being the meta variant of a class, like a Warden Healer, a Dragon Knight Tank, an Arcanist DPS is, yes, it's fun because they're very powerful. Every group accepts, you know, accepts you, et cetera. But sometimes it's just, it's, it feels bland. Arcanist DPS doesn't feel bland at all, but, you know, Dragonite tanking and Warden healing to me kind of feels bland a little bit. I like to experiment and see what I can create with things that aren't necessarily always the most popular. So having something that's slightly off meta like that is awesome. So I've played every role on every class, and I was really thinking about it. So what did Sork have? Insane PvP potential. Should I go down that route, you know? Stamina Sorcerer is currently parsing the highest on the Trial Iron Atronach Dummy out of anything. You can go on ESO Logs and check that out if you want. Mag Sork is the classic mage archetype that I absolutely love. There's always been a variety of archetypes that I've really, really enjoyed, and mage is top three for me. So the Paladin vibe, obviously, with Templar. The Mage and the Hunter. Those have been my three favorites across any RPG ever. Sork healing and tanking are off meta, but they're both actually really good and really fun. And there's endless potential and viability for things like a Bow Sork, One Bar Builds, Werewolf, you name it. So all in all, what's the point? Who cares? I wanted you all to see this because I'm not really going to be making any Templar-specific build videos anymore. I needed something new. I needed something to excite me to log in every day, and Templar and Nightblade just aren't really cutting it anymore. Warden would have been my other choice, like I said, with the Hunter archetype and stuff, but the Mage archetype just really spoke to me. I'm super pumped to be getting build videos out to you guys, to be re-experiencing the world of Tamriel again, and really taking my time through all of these old zones, most of which I've completely forgotten the story in, because it's been so long, or just because I spammed through it. When I first started playing ESO, I approached it, like an MMO, and I would just, you know, spam E, meaning the interact key, and I would spam through quests, and I missed a lot of that beginning stuff. So I really actually am going to take my time and go through re-experiencing these old zones. I've been watching another ESO YouTuber a ton. His name's Frostbreak. He's the man. I'll link his channel below. He's got an amazing, amazing playthrough kind of review system going on of the old zones. He just finished the Old Mary Dominion, and... His reviews and his insights and playthroughs were incredible. And it really inspired me to do this partially so that I could go back and experience it myself again because there were things he was saying where I was like, what? You know, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even remember any of this, you know? So, I mean, the point of this video is just to say I'm truly excited again to log in and play every day. And I can't say that, you know, I couldn't have said that, you know, a week ago. I couldn't have said that a few months ago. Right before Gold Road, sure. But outside of that, it's been a minute, you know? Who knows? I may do this again in the future after I 100% complete most of the stuff with, you know, with Sork. But anyways, it looks exciting, fun, and full potential. If y'all stayed until the end of this video, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to my TED Talk. I've got an incredible group of people that watch my videos, and it means the world to me that y'all have been here supporting me like you do. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.